Club de Havilland is your on-site bar and entertainment area. Whether you want to come for a drink with friends, have a bite to eat, or perhaps just relax, this is the place to come. There's a range of different things that you can do here, um, anything from playing a game of pool to watching the sports on a huge screen. Also, we're happy to help any student that has any event they want to organise, such as graduation parties, birthday parties, comedy nights, we're happy to help. There's loads of stuff that goes on at uni and you know I'd never done certain things before I thought oh, I'm not doing that that sounds really weird and I wish mm. some of the things that were available to me then that I'd actually done them. I was, I was involved in the student union as well actually Don't it was a lot know. of fun and it's a good way to meet people as well actually so if you're shy like, like you. me. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially what happens in the placements office is a whole range of help to assist you to find the 12 month work placement that you're going to undertake at the end of the second year and before your final year. All of the courses at the business school have an opportunity for you to take up this employability. It would be such a great experience through a placement year, definitely. Um, and also let's face it, you're being paid to work for a year, it's a nice break from studying. Um, you come back in the final year fresher, more focused. I came into the placements office and they were all very helpful and they had lots of job advertisements on the wall which they updated really regularly. So we source and we advertise a number of vacancies throughout the year for both large and small organisations. Um, that could be organisations like Disney, Xerox, IBM or Microsoft and also local opportunities as well. If I was at home I could access their website they have all the jobs on there and you can see in date order when they've been posted up so I can see the newest jobs that have just come in and also if I was interested in any of the jobs I could just email the placements office. Some of the help that we can offer are things like interview skills workshops, going through your CV, we can offer guidance with assessment centres and all the procedures that you're going to need to go through to make sure that you get the right placement for you. If I had an interview coming up and um, that I was really nervous about, then I could contact placements and I'd normally ask them for advice about what sort of questions they'd be asking and um, what I would need to prepare for. The most important piece of advice for Level 5 that I can give is to make sure that you start early. You need to get your CVs in nice and early in October, beginning of November, because an awful lot of the large organisations advertise their vacancies very, very quickly and you don't want to miss out on these great opportunities. Because at the end of the day you are competing against your friends, you're competing against other people that are in your year to get the job that you desire. So you have to make sure that you set enough time aside to fill in your application forms to get your CV checked by the placements office. You need to be popping in at least every week to make sure that you can take full advantage of all the help that's on offer and all the new jobs that are coming in all the time. We've discovered that a lot of students are coming back from their placement year with job offers or with valuable contacts that they've made during the placement year which will enable them to get jobs quicker and easier for when they graduate. So it's really, really encouraged that you take up this placement year and make sure that you take all these opportunities to become more employable and to get your career off to a good start. Um, or somewhere else. Welcome back, Level 5 students. Um, and for those of you that are direct entry to Level 5, welcome um, to the Business School. I believe pretty much all of you will get to meet me as a visiting lecturer on the employability and entrepreneurship um, module. Some of you in semester A, some in semester B, so I very much look forward to getting to meet you properly then. As well as the placement office, Graduate Futures, which is the um, university's graduate jobs and careers network, is also there to help you not just with those graduate jobs, but to look at maybe alternatives to placement or internships or other opportunities that can really help you be a success when you finish. 
but where you have time, please come along to the events that we lay on, um, employer presentations, um, come and meet employers, build that network, but also take time out to start practicing things like interview skills um, and aptitude tests, which employers are using more and more um, and tend to come up pretty early on in the recruitment process. By visiting Graduate Futures in, these last, in the last couple of days and weeks, um, I've improved greatly um, in terms of my CV preparation and my cover letter and how to tell it made these cover letter and the CV to the job, particular job description. I think it's, it's been a worthwhile to of visiting them. We offer 24-7 services to you online, which means that there's always an opportunity for you to access resources that will help you prepare for your future. Um, we also arrange and host the careers fairs that take place throughout the year. Um, all this kind of information is available throughout the term and in the vacation periods on jobs and careers and on the business school um, news items on StudyNet. In terms of, you know, if I have one bit of advice, just stay in contact with Claire Crux in the placement office and myself and Graduate Futures throughout this year um, and obviously through the module, the employability module. And if you do that, then hopefully you can't go far wrong. I think one of the important things today is to actually have something in addition to just having the degree, um, whether it be a work placement or a period of study abroad, because both of these can actually help you in terms of getting a job on graduation. So the idea is you study for one or two semesters at one of our partner universities, and we have partner universities in Europe, uh, most European countries, in North America, Australia and Southeast Asia. The study abroad programme gave me the opportunity to kind of experience the culture and immerse myself in it to see whether I can actually survive there rather than just be a holiday. You get to travel while you're there, you're away from home, it's an independent thing where you mature a lot. You can always pop into the office, uh, which is on the ground floor of the atrium in de Havilland, and get more information from us, and also pick up an information pack. Well, before you go, they help you sort out everything in terms of paperwork that you have to go out there, but when you actually get out there, you um, have um, the study abroad over there that helps you. For study abroad, we actually give you uh, some financial support uh, for studying and working abroad. If you're going into Europe, uh, we can give you money uh, from the European Union Erasmus programme for both studying and working. We had the loans from the LEA over here like you normally get. We got a little bit more money because we were going abroad. Outside of Europe we also have a number of scholarships and the university has uh, 20 global college scholarships which are open to you. The university here they gave us the academic side of the payment so they subsidised what we'd have to pay so the, the housing and the food was the only two things we had to pay for. So it's really quite important that this was number one that you need to decide where you want to go and number two that you actually get good grades uh, within the second year because that will influence where you can go in the third year. Obviously liaise with the, the study abroad office um, past students from here and the US that have gone before or Australia or France or Spain wherever you're planning on going. We've never had a student who come back and said they didn't want to do it um, but I think students often maybe find reasons perhaps why they shouldn't do it. Before I left for America I had slight anxieties about making new friends, fitting in, liking the place that I was because obviously I'd never been there before but the anxieties had been put to rest as soon as I arrived because everyone was just unbelievably welcoming. Uh, we have two closing dates. Uh, we have uh, January for those universities outside of Europe and we have sort of middle of March for universities within Europe. On your CV, when you finish your degree finally, it will say a year in North Carolina or a year in West Virginia. And that speaks a lot to like an employer in the future. They'll look at it and say, well, we can adapt. He's been somewhere else and survived there, came back, got a good degree. It pushed out a little bit above everyone else that would go for the same job. So. You become more culturable, culturally adaptable, I think, just because you have to be more understanding and more flexible. So it was a really good experience. Because a lot of people talk about it and a lot of people you speak to always say, oh, I wish I could have done that. Well, when the opportunity is there, so are you strong enough to take it or not? And those are the people that are come back. I don't know anyone that's come back and complained about it. I wish I could go back to university now. <laughs> I'd do so many things differently. What I would do differently would be play more football. I used to only play about five times a week. You can't play enough football. Definitely the socialising. I'd carry on doing what I did, which was making sure that I went out a few nights every week. And How many of you? 
Oh, yeah, oh gosh. Yeah, about four. <laughs> and then the rest of the time I was serious and I worked really hard. So I didn't mind working hard because I was also going out a lot. <gasps> wow, if I had the chance to go back to university now, what would I do differently? When I was at university, I think I took too much advantage of the social opportunities and, and way too little advantage of the study opportunities. I mean, you never found me in the library. I was always somewhere else. <laughs> I probably wouldn't play women's rugby again. Um, have one go at that with a bit of a wimp, have to say, and stuck with being social secretary for the rest of the time, um, which made the remaining couple of years um, brilliant. Um, that was really good. I didn't realise the importance of a lot of the skills that we, I, I now actually teach students. So in a sense, I think I'm, I'm very kind of, uh, I'm very motivated to make sure that the students uh, I teach now don't make the same mistake as I did. I think if I was going to do something differently, um, it would certainly be something to do with my dissertation. I know what it's like to write a bad dissertation, which is why I can advise students to write good ones, I think. Mine was awful when I look at it now. And there is a lot of things here in terms of support. We never had an academic skills unit when I was at university mm, many, many yeah. years ago. Um, and I wish we had really because you know they, they do such a great thing there's all there's like workshops that they do and everything which is great and they're very friendly um, you know and I went to university they, they just weren't friendly like that uh, go to lectures that's a good thing do you know what that's the hardest thing I guess if you've got a nine o'clock lecture and you always you always juggle stuff when you're a student don't you? you're feeling a bit crap or you've got work to do so you think right what can I let go so I can get this done what can I let go so I can go out what can I let go you know let go so I can get this assignment finished so you think all right um I won't go to that lecture tomorrow because um you know it means I can work later tonight or party later whichever you want I think what I do differently actually is I would learn how to cook because for the first year all I did was eat bird's eye menu master meals which were really boring and quite expensive actually and everybody who could cook ate good food and didn't get as fat as me. I always hauled my ass into lectures, always, no matter how rough I was and it was just brilliant because I did pick up a lot and I saw my mates as well and I made them go in even though they were hanging, I made them go in. But I did know how to cook, I still do. Mm. See, so if you've got a body shape like mine, don't learn how to cook. If body shape like Nika's. Good, good job they're showing me from... Yeah. Good job they found a seat for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's my advice anyway. <laughs> oh, did you film that? Yeah, that was filmed. Lovely. Uh, that's it then. We can, we can do an outtake. We can be an outtake, can't we? Yeah, that was your outtake. Okay, oh, that was our outtake, okay. <laughs> <laughs>